Okay, so we move on to our final activity. Okay, final activity task B4 of the 2022 uh, June practical paper. Over here, it says open the database file contact, open the database table address. Okay, let's do that right now. So we have the contact database, we'll open it. And uh, inside this, we have to open the address table. So this is the information you find. You find title, first name, initial, last name, address one. You know, you find this information inside the address table, okay? Then it goes on to say, open the word processed file letter. So let's open the file letter. So over here, you can find that there is content for a letter inside, okay? So let's enable editing here. And you can find the content for the letter inside this document, okay? So it's on a letterhead. You have the company's details at top. You have a space for title, last name, okay? The content is all there. Okay, let's see what needs to be done, okay? Enter task B4A, your name, candidate number, center number, and, sen and center number in the footer of the file letter. So let's come to insert header and footer. Let's go into footer. Let's click on edit footer, okay? And over here, we say task B4A, your name, your candidate number, and your center number, okay? So with that, you can close the header and footer, okay? And then it says, Brogan wants to send a letter to some customers who have booked a party. She has written the letter and saved it as letter. So this is the file that she has written, okay? Brogan has a list of three customers who will be sent a letter in the address table in the contact database. So these are the customers. These are the three customers who are supposed to receive this letter, okay? Right. Task B4A, the letter needs to be edited before it is merged. So there are some changes we need to make before we merge the letter. So edit the letter. Insert the logo you created in task A1B on the right-hand side of the header, on the right-hand side of the header. So let me open up the header. Let's double click it and the header is opened. And now I'm gonna go into my folder. I'm going to copy the logo, which is this one. Control C. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press Control V. So logo is obviously way too big from the corners. I'm gonna make it a lot smaller. It's got upside down, that's okay. And I want it to be on the right-hand side. So there are two ways you can do this. You can either click on home and say right align. That is one way you can do it. Or what you can do is you can come to picture format. You can come to wrap text and you can say tight. Okay, so now this will allow you to freely move it onto the right-hand side somewhere over here. Okay, somewhere over here. So those are two ways of uh, taking your logo onto the right hand side. Okay, right. The first change is done. Inserting today's date in a suitable location. So ideally, the date should be right at the beginning of your letter. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my cursor before title. I'm gonna press enter. So now I can bring my cursor to the top again. I'm gonna come to insert and I'm gonna say date and time. Okay. So I'm gonna go with date and time or just date? They just said uh, today's date, okay? So I'm gonna go with the second option, okay? And, uh, let's see, okay. So date has been inserted, let's keep a space again. The next thing it says is insert a suitable, sorry, insert a subject in a suitable location. So ideally, the subject would come after the first name. I'm going to press enter here again. Again, press enter so I have enough space before and after. And I'm supposed to put a subject line over here. So when you read the question paper, when you read the question paper, you can understand it. Brogan wants to send letter to some customers who have booked a party here. So what do you think would be a suitable title for this letter? You can say, uh, your booking details okay shall we keep this as the heading or your booking confirmation or your booking is confirmed you know something like that could be an ideal subject line okay now we must make it look like a subject line so let's bold it let's underline it let's center align it center align is control e okay so let's make it look like a subject line okay the next thing it says add bullets to the relevant discount information so for the discount information, which is over here, we have to put it in bullet form. So I have selected it. I'm gonna to come to the home tab and I'm gonna put it in bullet form, okay, bullet points. The next thing it says is 
insert the appropriate complementary clause. So normally you have a complementary clause has to come over here. So a complementary clause can be like yours faithfully, thank you, yours sincerely, okay? Looking forward to hearing a favorable reply. So depending on the content of the letter, you have to decide on a complementary clause. So we're talking about a quote now. So we're talking about confirming the booking now. So you can say yours sincerely. That looks good enough. And then we have to insert the name and job role of the sender of the letter. So name of the sender. If you go into the scenario, they say Brogan wants to send a letter. So what is Brogan's full name? So Brogan's full name, you can find in the scenario of the paper right at the beginning. This is where you can see his name is Brogan Saravanan. Let's copy his name. And let's paste it over here. Okay. And what is his job role? He is the manager. Okay, so let's change this to manager. Okay, let's make this bold. Okay, so this space is for the signature. The next thing it says is, let's scroll all the way down. Uh, so when we come over here, it says uh, insert, we have done this. The client details are stored in the address table in the contact database. Add the correct merge fields or document to replace the text in brackets, okay? So the first thing we have to do is before we put the merge fields over here, we have to first import that data into Microsoft Word. Okay, so in order to do that, we come into the mailings tab and we say select recipients, select the contacts. Okay, so we tell our computer, use an existing list. We already have the list, use an existing list. So we click on that and our computer asks us, okay, where is your list kept? So I tell my computer it's on the desktop. It's in the 2022 practical paper. So you'll have to go wherever you have kept it. It's inside contact database. I click on open. Okay. So now the database has been imported into Microsoft Word. Okay. Now I have to match. I have to tell the computer where to insert the data. Okay. So if you come in the, in the mailing step, if you come and click on insert merge field, you can see all the columns have appeared. Title is there. First name is there. So all the data that, data that was there in the address table has appeared over here. Now I have to tell, tell my computer where to place them. Okay, so I tell my computer, I keep the cursor over here and tell my computer, the title and last name is supposed to come here. So I click over here and I say, put the title, keep a space and put the last name. Okay, so now this bit I don't need because now I have already inserted it. I can remove this reference. Over here, address one is supposed to appear. So I say address one. Over here, address two is supposed to appear. I say address two. Over here, postcode is supposed to appear. So I say P code, enter. Over here, first name is supposed to appear. Let's change this to first name. And over here, party type is supposed to appear. Okay, guys, make sure there's always a space before and after, okay? Otherwise, it's not gonna look good. Okay, so party type is supposed to appear over here. Is there anything else we have to merge? No. So before you go ahead and merge it, just have a look at it, preview it, okay? Click on preview results, which is in the mailing tab. Just preview it and it looks quite fine. The date is appearing, names are appearing, first name. Is there any change you want to make? I, of course, would prefer to keep all this in regular text, switch off italics, switch off italics, switch off italics. You also switch off italics. I would prefer to put a comma after this, okay? So if you're happy with it, then you can switch off preview mode. You can switch it off now, okay? Now, how do we, uh, so resave the let's resave the letter showing the merge fields, so let's resave it. And they have also told us to save the letter as a PDF document. So if you press F12, F12 is the shortcut key for save as F12 and save it in PDF format, which is over here. So you have now saved it in PDF format as well. Click on save. Then the question paper goes on to say, Brogan wants to check and sign the letters before they are posted, merge the data to produce the letters, ensure the letters are fit for purpose. Okay, so we have to now produce it, okay? So right now we have done the merging, but we haven't merged it yet. We haven't produced it yet, okay? So what we have got to do is we have to come and click on finish and merge and say edit individual documents. Then our computer asks us, okay, do you want us to merge everything? We say, yes, I want you to merge all records. And we click on okay. As soon as you click on okay, a separate, 
a separate Word document is created with your letters. So you will be having three letters because there are only three contacts now, which is why you have three letters over here. So your merge document, which is this, can you see right now we have two documents. This is where the merging was done. And this is the merged document. So you have to save the merged document as, as what? As uh, merge, okay? So let's come over here and press F12, shortcut key for save as, and let's save it as merged. So we are supposed to save it in Word format as well as uh, PDF format, okay? We have to also save it in PDF format. So we also take it in the F format. Right, that's also done. Then it says open a new word processing document, enter task B4B, your name, candidate number, center number in the header of the new word document, save the new document as task B4B. Okay, so let's do that. Let's right click over here, new word document. And we call this task B, where is it? Task, uh, what happened? Task B or B. Let's open it. Double click on the header and over here we say task B for B, your name, your candidate number and your center number. Close header and footer. Then the question paper goes on to say, explain one advantage of using mail merge to produce the letters for Brogan's customers. So one benefit. So you do know if we use mail merge, the user will not have to manually Put the contact details for each letter. They just simply have to connect it to the database and automatically Microsoft Word will create a personalized letter for each recipient. Okay, shall we put that down? You can say, by using mail merge, Brogan will not have to manually type the contact details and party details for each letter. Instead, all he has to do is simply connect the letter to the database and Microsoft Word will automatically create a personalized letter for each customer. Okay, so basically Brogan has to create the letter only once. And then Microsoft Word will personalize it, automatically personalize it for each customer. Okay, I hope you get it. The uh, second question, it goes as, state one software facility that can be used to ensure accuracy when reviewing a document. So when reviewing a document, you'll be checking for spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes and all that. So you can use something called spell checker. Okay, you have something called spelling and grammar. Okay, shortcut key is F7. You can use that. Okay, so you can type here, spelling and grammar okay the third question goes as describe the difference between data and information so this is something all the way from chapter number one okay difference between data and information you can say data is or data is raw facts okay once they are processed by the computer's processor they become information okay so basically guys when you press a key when you press a button when you touch your screen you're basically giving data to your computer it doesn't make any sense but once your computer processes what you typed what you clicked what you touched okay once it processes it and gives you an output that becomes information that becomes something that you can understand okay so data is raw facts unprocessed information okay so data is raw facts once it is processed it becomes information okay so I hope that makes sense. Okay, this goes all the way back to chapter one, one of the first few things you would have learned when you started ICT. So with that, they say resave task B4B and also save it as a PDF. So let's do that. We resave it and we also save it as a PDF. So let's come over here and save it as a PDF. Save. Okay, there you go. Okay, so with that, then we have come to the end of task B4. Okay, we have also finished section B and we have also finished this entire paper. I hope it went well for you. I hope you were able to 
properly properly benefit from this okay if there are any questions any doubts do check the description of the video and then you will know how you can get in touch okay all the very best and uh, see you in the next few videos take care